Stephen, why are you playing as well as you are playing? <laughs> yeah, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, yeah, th- I, there's no secret sauce, to be honest. It's just kind of a bit of everything, you know, just feeling good about my game and um, pretty fit and, and confident. So, um, yeah, it's just come at the right time. And, and I'm enjoying myself too. It's a whole different atmosphere and vibe out there. And, um, you know, it's, it's a. It's a long way where I've come from, the corn ferry and kind of struggling out there. So, yeah, just enjoying the golf and, and enjoy playing the game and, um, yeah, just enjoying where, where I'm at uh, competing against these guys. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I feel comfortable, but uh, it's still still getting used to, to playing with these guys and being amongst the company. So it's a lot of fun. When I say why are you playing so well, I suppose the question I should have asked is why are you playing with such consistency? Well, that's the big thing. That's what I'm probably most proud of, to be honest, is just... Uh, consistently you know I'm, I'm giving myself chances to to win tournaments every week and and my scoring average is good and you know trying to you know, keeping bogeys off the card when i can so all those things kind of add up to you know good scoring and consistent scoring so um and that's the big thing i'm obviously my game you know is in good shape hitting lots of fairways and greens and you know if you if you I have a good putting week then i'm, I'm kind of right in contention so so it's a good feeling to have knowing that you, know, you get out in the course and you're hitting the ball well and um, you, you're going to you know, at least have a, have a good good run at the end of the week. Stephen Elka with us, who's ranked first on the Champions Tour at the moment. Why is the, why is the Champions Tour so important? Um, yeah, well, it's important um, in terms of fan base, like seeing the you know the legends of the game and and um and a whole different atmosphere it's a little more relaxed out here than the pga tour that's that's a big thing that's kind of what the champions tour is all about so um and and i think that's help helps the players play well as well they're a little more relaxed and um having a bit of fun obviously it's pretty competitive when you're you're down the stretch playing with these guys they, they want to win as as much as any anybody's so but um yeah I, I think that's a big thing having the fan base and and you know um have been a good atmosphere out there and and showing the fans having a good time and and showing some pretty good golf too so which is huge what's the age range of the players yeah, so uh, you're 50. Once you turn 50, you're um, you're out there. But we've still got guys playing uh, like Jay Haas. I don't think he plays a full schedule, but he's like 68, 69 now. Um, yeah, there's still a bunch of guys around about the 59, 60 mark still playing very well. I mean, obviously, Lang is, you know, he's a um, super freak. He's 64 or something and, and fit as a fiddle and still playing well. So, you know, you've, you've got a big... Um, age range there but uh yeah, yeah there's there's always guys coming on like i'm not the youngest i'm not the the, the youngest guy i should say no. now i'm kind of you know mid 50s so i'm um you know you got guys coming on all the time harrington's just come on uh brian gay and a few other guys so every year you're going to get a couple of guys just kind of coming on they're a little bit younger a little bit stronger so you gotta try and stay in shape and, and uh, keep the game up Stephen Elker is with us. Look, let's let's not forget also Tom Watson. If he had a par the last in the British, he would have won a major at what fifty nine, almost sixty years old. We had Phil winning one last yeah. year at fifty. So, you know, does, yeah. it, does it does it does it give you confidence? I mean, I don't know whether you could go back and actually play the PGA Tour, but you know, the fact that there are men who have you know achieved at that level at that age says a lot. What I'm trying to get at is this is really good golf that you're playing, right? It's not just old guys playing golf around the golf course here. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's true. You know, I think uh, I, I think what I've found is since I've come out of, you've actually got to shoot low scores. You've got to shoot four or five under every day, and you know, to, to be in the hunt and, and win golf tournaments. So you've still got to play some really good golf. Um, and I think that's what drives a lot of guys who want to win. You know, you've still got to go out there firing and, and, and make as many birdies as you can. So, but I think with guys like Watson and, and Mickelson, to answer your question, you know, these guys are still, they've stayed in good shape. They've stayed competitive, you know, kept playing into um, into their 50s. So, you know, and they've won a lot of golf tournaments too. That's the big thing. You know, I haven't won on the PGA Tour, to, certainly to the level, but um, it, it's still in them. You know, these guys, you know, Ernie Els and Montgomery and, Lang and all these guys have got 
it all in them to it's all, all experience and they kind of draw from that and um it's pretty cool to watch too so it's hard to kind of focus on my game and keep keep playing my game the old mate brendan telfer who i know that you know um i was uh, speaking with yeah, Tel- yeah. speaking with telf last week and he's telling me all these things that i need to do pilates and he does tai chi and things and and so, and this means that he can play consecutive rounds of golf and so you know how is the body what do you do to to keep extra fit and also flexible because that's what he says is the major thing to play golf at this age is the flex yeah. Yeah, it is exactly. Yeah, mobility, and and that's where I've changed my program a little bit. I've gone into more mobility and stability stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm not shifting the weights heavy. I'm maybe some off season stuff. I'll, I'll pump it up a little bit. But for me, good good uh, mobility and good stability in my swing. That's why I've been so consistent. I feel like things don't change too much week to week. I can kind of, you know, the, my angles and my, my body staying pretty much the same and um, and I feel better out there for it. So, yeah, that, that, that's huge, especially, you know, you get into your 50s and probably the guys get in the 60s. I always see Ben Langer in the, in, in the trailer getting stretched out. So he, he's got a pretty good routine and, and, and works pretty hard at Stephen Elker is leading. He's ranked first on the Champions Tour at the moment. He's with us in, from Michigan on the platform. Are you are you a better... When I ask if you're a better player, I want to go back to that. Are you a calmer player, a more rational player about what happens? Are you sort of more easygoing, more philosophical than you were when you were when you were a young buck on the tour? Yeah, I, I think so. That just comes by the age, you know what I mean? It's just a bit of maturing. I think I'm a lot calmer out there and don't let things get to me. Um... And I think that's just a, you know, that's just a kind of a natural process, to be honest. Um, a lot of the guys out here I've found who have played with have, you know, may have been a little bit of a hothead, but they've kind of seemed to calm a little bit. We all do, um, Stephen, over certainly... a period of time, mate. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, yeah, I, I, hopefully it, it stays it, it, it stays that way because you know, I just feel more relaxed out there and making better decisions and, and don't get too too racked up about things so you know little, less less stress is good if you could turn back time then i mean obviously the following question what would you say to the younger steve ranelka i mean i don't hate asking third part third person questions but you know what i mean yeah no exactly no people have asked me that before and said you know what's the difference what you know what would you you know if you, you could turn back time and I, I think just um one i'd probably you know work harder on my body um and two yeah just just um i probably wouldn't actually practice as much as I would you know I'd I'd focus on other things maybe do some more short game or um, not just beat balls in the range and and stress about it too much you know Um, at the moment you know obviously I'm playing well I've got a good blueprint with with my swing and what what I need to work on and things but um, yeah it comes a point where you just kind of get worn out you know it's just like you know why Tiger Woods was so good he just had had breaks he had two or three weeks off you know between tournaments he was coming fresh you know he was just prepared so yeah i I certainly prepare better but um you know i'm 50 now it's all done you you gotta learn learn from those um yeah got a second career you know i'm I'm working at it and using it for that look and i'll draw the parallel with tennis as well where you're looking at federer and you're looking at nadal and you're looking at you know these guys won't play all the tournaments now they're very clever about how they prepare and everything As, as, as you say it's just life and you just learn don't you and but I want to turn, yeah. turn the attention to what happened yesterday uh, at the PGA and um, Mito Pereira, and I'm not going to call it a Jean Vandeveld because it wasn't a meltdown like that, but I'm, you know, even today I'm still gutted for this young man. And I wonder, Stephen, mm. you know, at that age, I mean, now talking to you about, you know, when we mature and stuff like that, but I, what I worry about is, you know, can he come back from that to get himself into another position to be able to have another crack at it and be calm enough at, at that moment. It's, a, it's such a difficult thing to do at any age, let alone when you're a young one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, he's young enough. He's a, he's a good kid. I played with him out in the corn for a, a few times, and he's got a lot of game. Um, I, I think he's got that temperament, you know, that South American temperament where n- not too much kind of phases you and you just kind of get on with it. So um, I, I didn't actually see him play the whole. I just saw a highlight of his drive and things. I didn't watched much golf last week but you don't see that happening too often uh, now you know those situations with the young guys they're, they're pretty staunch under the under the gun but you know it's, it's i think it was the golf course too you know if you just sit you miss it in the wrong place and you you can get a bad break you know obviously you hit it in the hazard but you know it's kind of not hard to make a double bogey you know after doing what he did so 
Um, yeah, but you know, that's that's what's happening with a lot of young guys now. They're very confident going out. They shrug things off pretty quickly and, and get on with it. So I think it'd be all right. Look, it's the way they play, isn't it? You just kind of like you know they sort of you know attending to hit the jackpot at every single shot. It's look, it's exciting for us fans to watch. It's perhaps a different way of playing yeah. the game, but it's a fearless way of playing, which means it can go wrong. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's um, it's almost like a you know in that situation, it's more kind of conservative, aggressive play rather than just go flat out and attack it. So, you know, who knows? Guys have said maybe you should have hit three watt off the off the 18th, and you know, you could have done this, could have done that. But um, you know, as I say, he'll he'll, he'll learn from it and, and carry on. And um, I, I'm I'm certain he'll get another chance. He's got a lot of game. Stephen Elker, who's leading the Champions Tour at the moment. A couple more questions. We'll let you go. And I thank you so much for your time, mate. Look, just pretend we'll play pretend game here. I'm the guy from the yeah. pe- from the professional investment fund. I'm a Saudi Arabian prince, and I'm ringing you up, and I'm saying, <laughs> Mr. Elker, you're doing pretty well on tour at the moment, pal. I'd like to throw a large check in your face. And look, this is going to happen at, to, to all the golfers at some stage. We talked to Ryan Fox about this last week. He was he was really yeah. circumspect about what he said. I'll just briefly tell you. He just said that. He said, look, at the moment, the first guys are getting shot down. He said everything else. Maybe it's you know best to just to pull back. And he was also one of those guys who wants to play the PGA Tour and, and wants to crack at the majors and things. But Stephen, there's so much money on offer here, you know. I mean, the money is the tempter, and, and I, I can't judge anyone who takes the money, but at the same time, I'm just more interested in your thoughts and values on this. Well, um, I look at it this way. It depends, purely depends on your situation, where you're at in your career. Um, that, that seems like the biggest thing. Um, I've talked to a bunch of guys um, where I practice it in Scottsdale and about it, and they're, they're in the same boat, you know. Do I, don't I? And then you've basically got to weigh up, you know, where you're at. Um, do you want to play, you know, eight or ten events? Is that enough for you? Or do you want to play, you know, full schedule, 25, 30 events? Do you want to play all the world championships and the majors? Well, you know, you got to decide that. Uh, yeah, the money's great and it's out there. Um, it's, it's all there to play for. But I, I think what's happening is, and what's going to happen is, this is my personal view, is that sure. you're going to get some guys just getting a feeler, Okay, let's see how it goes for a first year or two. See if it grows. See if it's got some sustainability, and then make a decision from there. I think um, you know some of the older guys who are jumping in, the Westwoods and the Porters, and you know coming towards the end of the career. That's understandable, but for a young guys, tough decision. Um, you know, and I, I don't know if me what I right now no because I've got a new home on the Champions Tour and. I'm happy out here and um, I can play a full schedule of 25. Um, hey, if I'm still playing as well in another five or six years, I may change my mind. But, um, yeah, I, that's kind of where I'm at on the whole thing. So it's an interesting interesting thing. But we are um, independent contractors. You know, we should be allowed to do what we want. But, yep, yeah, you know, there's, there's going to be some loyalty there as well. You know, so, it, yeah, it can go either way. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it'd be interesting to see how it all pans out. Scottsdale, mate, I tell you what, it's a lovely place for an older gent to, 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 to park up and to live his life. I love Arizona, mate. It's, it's a never-ending yeah. warm heat, beautiful views, mountains, <laughs> lovely dry heat in it. It's a gorgeous place. Yeah, it's a good spot. You get a little warm right now. We're up in the hundreds just before I left. Okay, but, yeah, that's uh, a little warm. You know, 100, 105, you can, you can handle it. But uh, when it gets to 110, 115, it's time to get out, yeah. As opposed to Michigan, and Michigan is, oh man, you don't want to be living there all year round. But look, congratulations on everything that you've achieved so far this year. It's a delightful story, mate. You're getting a mass amount of press back here in New Zealand. Really, really appreciate your time. Excellent. Thanks for having me.